everybody. Welcome back to Brownie Knits. This is episode nine, I believe. Um, I'm Gina, I'm your host, also known as Brownie Knits, all one word, on Instagram and Ravelry. You can also find me on Facebook as Brownie Knits, two words. Um, I think that's about it. Oh, I'm also on Craftsy, if you happen to um, shop for patterns and such through Craftsy. So it's been two weeks since I podcasted last, and last time I had my friend Carol with me, and we recorded in Cincinnati, Ohio. And after we recorded, we had a great day of watching podcasts and knitting and crocheting, and then we went out the next day um, and did a little bit of shopping, but we didn't do too much. And then I headed home, and as soon as I got home, I felt horrible. I had picked up a cold that's been going around um, in our area and I spent quite a few days with congestion and my throat hurt really bad and then then I was coughing. That was probably the worst of it. So I wasn't feeling well. And then um, our older dog, Riley, he um, became ill and we had to make the difficult decision to let him go, and um, that was pretty hard. He was, he would have been 16 in May. We'd had him since before we were even engaged. Um, we got him, we started dating, and then almost right away got him. And I remember one of my friends saying, I knew you guys were going to be together forever when you got a dog together. So he was even mentioned in our vows, and he just was really a special little boy. So, I have his puppy picture here with me on the table, and um, we're doing a few other things to kind of honor his memory that I'll talk about in a future podcast. So, and Kennedy, I've had people ask me how Kennedy, also known as Kiki, so um, how she's doing, and she's never ever been an only dog. When we got her, she was older than a puppy because she was so small when she was born. So she was always with her sister from her litter, and um, then she came and was with Riley. So I'll put some pictures at the end of this podcast of the two of them together, and then some of Riley. Um, but she's been doing pretty well. We've been spoiling her a lot. Um, the first few days she looked for him a lot, and that really choked us up. But um, we got her some toys that she was never really allowed to have because they would fight over them. So she's getting toys now that he got the first five years when he was the only dog. So she's loving that. So um, anyway, so that was pretty difficult. And I, in times of stress like that, I find that I either don't craft at all or I go on a binge of finishing things and become really productive. And this time around, I went on a finishing binge. So I'm not really gonna talk about um, any works in progress because well really I only have kind of one in progress anyway um, and I will show that one but um, I'm gonna mostly talk about finished items in this podcast so but this is the podcast episode for block two of the Brownie Knits 2015 block blanket along so um, if you are here for that welcome if you are just now hearing about the Blanket Along and you want to join, even if you're watching this later in the year, please do join. It's never too late. Um, the blocks are really like small projects. Even though you're making an afghan um, by the end of the year, it's really not as overwhelming when you break it down by blocks. So you could easily catch up. And the first block that we did was the slants block. Look like this. And this is what I designed it out of. This is Barocco Vintage um, Worsted, and it's the color Mushroom. And then I did a, um, a blanket that I'm making for myself that's not a design sample, just that I'm just knitting. And this is um, the Slants Block out of Dreaming Color, and the color is Melon Bomb. I think that this one might be a discontinued color. I've had this in my stash for absolutely ages. So, um using up some stash. So anyway, I wanted to bring those up just because I wanted to let you know that um, not every block is going to be exactly 12 by 12 because of the interior panel of stitches that you have, you know, different stitch counts are required to make them work out. 
This will probably be your largest block. So therefore I would recommend putting this on a corner. And in the Brownie Knits Ravelry group, there's a thread for the Brownie Knits Block Blanket Along, which we're tagging as hashtag BK Blanket Along. Um, and in that thread, the very first post is from me and I give the dates of when each block will be released. And I'm gonna put, as, as I release them now, I'm gonna say where I would recommend putting that in the blanket if there is a recommendation. And then um, the any other special notes that I think would be good for you to know. Nothing that'll give away the look of it, but just kind of general notes. So this will be your widest one. And then block two. I'm very excited about block two. So I'm gonna show you first in the vintage, Broca vintage that it was designed in. So this is block two. It's called Petals and it has a centered lace motif. In the block, it's both written and charted. So if you are Someone who likes to work from written instructions instead of charts, you can do that. If you're someone who likes to work from a chart instead of written, you can do that. Um, it is centered both horizontally and vertically. Um, you work the bottom garter stitch section, and then on the last row of that, you will decrease in one, and I give instructions for that. So this has 51 stitches total across. So this will be your smallest block of the blanket because it is a lace motif. And the reason that I did that is when you block this, I want you to put it in um, toward the center of your blanket. And I want, when you first of all, when you block it, you're going to really stretch it. So if it looks small when you're knitting it, when you block it, you're really, really, really gonna stretch it. Um, mine blocked out to be right at 12, 12. And when I put it in my afghan, I'm gonna put it in the center panel, surrounded on all four sides, so that my other blocks pull it in every direction and really make that pop in the center. Because you want all those eyelets to really open up a lot and you want the eyelets to kind of take up more room than just one stitch would. You want them to take up like two or, eight or even two and a half to three stitch um, spaces. So to really get that flower to pop up. So if you're using Broca Vintage and you're getting gauge, or if you're using something that has um, some wool in it like Broca does and you're getting gauge, you can totally knit the block as written as I designed it. If you're using um, something else from your stash and you're getting larger blocks, so your gauge is larger, instead of getting four and a half stitches and six and a half rows, you're getting four stitches and six rows as your gauge, you're going to get a larger block than my block. If your row gauge is larger, so four instead of four and a half, and your row gauge, your, that, I'm sorry, that was your stitch gauge. If your stitch gauge is larger, four instead of four and a half, and your row gauge is larger, six instead of six and a half, then you should still come out as a block if you follow the instructions. You should still be able to follow the same number of rows, and it should still come out square, okay? Same if you're um, getting, let's say you're getting five stitches to the inch, and seven rows. You're gonna get a smaller block because your gauge is tighter, but because both your stitches and your rows are tighter, you should still get a square if you follow the instructions as written. Now, if you're somebody who's getting a different stitch gauge than my gauge, let's say you're getting four stitches, but you're still getting six and a half rows, your row gauge didn't um, get bigger along with your stitch gauge. In that case, you might need to do more rows. And for all the other blocks in the blanket, you can just work more rows of the pattern repeat to get that depth. But because this one is centered, you might need to add rows above and below. 
So if you're going to add two rows, if you think you need to add two rows to get your depth to where you want it, you'd want to do, well, first of all, you can't do two rows. You have to do a multiple of four because you need to do a, um, a cross and back. So if you need to add four rows, you would do two rows here, front and back, and two rows here, front and back, just in plain stock knit. If you need eight, you do four here and four here. If, so the, I think those are all the ifs I'm going to go through because I, I really worried about this one a lot just because of all the differences that people are getting um, just from using stash and using a different gauge. Um, and then I decided, you know, I, I designed it for Barocco and it came out right and I would give you guys some different pointers and I think I've probably given um, enough to cover everybody. But if you have questions beyond that, please feel free to ask me and I will help you individually as well. So, um, like I said, this one will be the one that we heavily block. You're going to want to stretch it and pull it and really manipulate it in. Okay, so that's the Barocco Vintage one. And then <laughs> I wanted to show you this too. So my Barocco Vintage one, I'm knitting on sevens to get gauge. My one that I'm doing out of Dream and Color and some Miss Babs, Yowza. At first on a seven, I was getting a block this size. And I started panicking, thinking my design was off for all of them. And then I was like, no, 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 <laughs> measure your gauge, Gina. And so then when I did, you know, I, my gauge was too small on this block. When I went up to an eight and got gauge, I was dead on at 12 by 12. So for this block, I really think a medium a so lighter weight color probably shows it best. This is not showing up on camera as well as, there we go, as it is in person. Um, I'd probably avoid like a black, but and anything else I think you'd be fine. But my one on a seven was about an inch to an inch and a half smaller all the way around than my on gauge one on an eight. So just to give you an idea. This block was inspired by an afghan design that I did years ago called the Petal Baby Afghan. Um, and I put pictures of it at the beginning of this podcast in the opening credits. And here it is. So it's a good size for a child or a blanket for a baby that you might like lay down on the floor to let them play on. It's also a good size for a lap gan for an adult. I use it when I'm watching TV and things. So, and it was also designed using Barocco Vintage. I knitted it on a size nine needle um, to make the overall feel of it kind of lighter. And again, this is the Petal Baby Afghan. And that's available in Ravelry for purchase. It's also available on brownieknits.com and on knitpicks.com. Um, there's a version of it in knitpicks out of their Swish Worsted, which is a really nice um, soft yarn to use as well. And then after I finished that one, I had, um, I was still working at the shop at that time when I was um, designing and working at the shop. And I had one of the customers said, well, I need a boy themed one because, um, you know, we've got boy babies out there that we need something. And then my nephews were all coming along right around that time and they were all obsessed with cars and trucks and trains. So I made a little choo-choo train afghan. So this is the choo-choo choo -choo train blanket. And I worked on this one a lot when I was designing it to get some motion out of the wheels using the lace technique. And then the, um, the pearl comes up out of the smokestack to give it some smoke. And this is also out of Barocco Vintage Worsted and um, is on Ravelry and BrownieKnits.com and Craftsy. 
for purchase. You can also purchase it on nitpicks.com and a version of it is also made out of the Swish Worsted. So those are two of my older designs, but I just really love them. They're kind of timeless and they make great um, baby gifts. And I've also had, um, and toddler gifts actually for the choo-choo. Um, I've also had some wives make the choo-choo train one for a lapkin for their husbands who love trains and they have been thrilled with those. So just some different ideas and to let you know where I, where the idea came from for the pedal baby. Um, there's also a, I filmed and uploaded a techniques, excuse me, for the Brownie Knits 2015 block blanket. Um, that's the name of it, techniques for. Um, and put that on my Brownie Knits YouTube channel. It's about eight minutes long. It goes over the different techniques that you'll need for this block. I tell you how to read a chart. I tell you um, how and show you both left-handed and right-handed, well, let me say that again, continental and English style knitting for all the different techniques that are included. Yarn over, slip, slip, knit, um, knit two together, slip one, knit two together, pass slip stitch over, um, and a few other techniques. I show you all of those. I also demonstrate how I knit and purl because I've had people ask me about that. I am a continental knitter, but I do know how to knit English style with it in my right hand as well. Um, but I knit continental and I kind of have a different type of hold than a normal continental knitter. Um, I hold it like I do, I do when I crochet. So I hold it very loosely. And somehow over the years, I've really gotten a pretty good tension that way. So, you know, whatever works for you. If it works, it works. So anyway, I thought I'd include that in the video because I've had several people ask me. So that video is up on the Brownie Knits YouTube channel. And um, if you watch that and a little bit of this section before you knit block two, that should answer most of your questions, but always feel free to um, send me a private message in Ravelry or email me at brownieknits at yahoo.com um, or post on the Brownie Knits Ravelry board in the blanket thread. Okay, I think that's everything for the block. Um, now I'm just gonna show you some of the things that I mentioned that I had finished recently. Um, one of my friends, one of my dear friends from, I mean, we've known each other we, well, we were probably since first grade, I think, um, just had a little baby girl. And so I knitted up this little hat and it's so adorable. The main hat pattern is by Heather Anderson and it's called the, um, let's see, the cute noggin baby hat. And it, in the design, she actually has like little, um, they're not eye cord, but they kind of look like that up here. I decided not to do that, and I've been playing around with a bow design for a new design that I'm hoping to release this fall. Um, and so I did a little bow, and then I had that button, the poodle button, in my stash, and sewed that on. And I just thought it was adorable. So this will go out in the mail um, tomorrow to baby Haley. Um, the yarn is universal, um, had it written down, I'll put it across here. If you look here right now, it should be there. Okay. Um, so that's one finished item. Then I also finished my city girl in the last episode, I showed you the yarn that Carol got me for Christmas and it was the turtle pearl, um, city girl colorway. So I finished those socks. I just did, I think I did 64 stitches and just did a garter stitch heel. I did them cuff down. And I think they're so cute. I love how they turned out. Beautiful. Just really love them. Yay. So I've been leaving them on my blockers until I showed them on the podcast and so now I get to wear them. Next up, 
um, is a hat sample that I made. And this is my slouchy honey hat with a big old pom-pom on there. And this is my own design. This is the slouchy honey hat available on, right now available on Ravelry, Craftsy, and browningknits.com. And this is the small medium. It also comes in a large, extra large. And you do this fun honeycomb pattern up here with your two colors. You never use more than one color in a row, so you don't have to worry about stranding or anything like that. And I knitted this out of Knit Picks City Tweed DK. The blue color is Cobalt, and the gray is Tahitian Pearl. Okay, I have my hair up today, so I'm not sure. It is a slouchy hat, so I might be able to get it on. I'm not sure, though. It might look quite silly. There you go. It's a really, really cute hat, um, if I do say so myself. So anyway, that was a fun one. And, you know, I knitted it up one afternoon and a little bit the next morning. So it does go fairly fast if you're looking for a hat to knit. Um, we had a snowstorm, not compared to the East Coast, they really got hit, but we had a little bit of a snowstorm here yesterday and, um, or this weekend, I guess it was. So that was fun. People got to be able to go out and sled and things like that. I went out and took photos of my new hat in the snow. <laughs> Um, and then I finally finished. This is gorgeous. This is the Oxford Hooded Cow by Julia Noskova. Yeah, Noskova. It's available in Ravelry for purchase. It uses a brioche stitch here in the center of, surrounded by some garter. And I kept calling it a snood because you can wear it looped around, which is why it's called a cow. I don't know if you can hear me with, there we go. Um, so you can wear it like that, but then when you're outside, you can put it up and around you to be your hat as well. Isn't that, I just love it. Um, it was not gonna, sugarcoat it. It was a bit of an epic knit <laughs> because you don't, hang on a second, with the brioche, you, it's not like you're just knit, knit, knit. You do, you do a little technique that I won't reveal too much because I'm, you know, it's a for purchase pattern, but it does kind of slow you down. It's not difficult at all. I highly encourage you to give it a shot. Um, but it does slow you down a bit. So it did take me a lot longer to make this than I thought it would, but the yarn is so wonderful. It is a 50%, here's my tag, 50% alpaca, 25% merino, 25% silk. It's a hand spun. I bought the roving years and years and years ago and um, gave it to my friend Christina of A Knitter's Life. And at the time we were both just kind of starting out as designers and I was an editor as well. Um, and so in exchange for editing her patterns, she would spin yarn for me. And so this is what she spun for me during that time. And I went through and um, used up every skein of it. So I have a pair of mittens that I made to match. And because it was an epic knit and took a long time, I was really grateful to have such a wonderful yarn to be using, and I just love it. It's just this really gorgeous blue and brown mixture. And I think um, it's supposed to be in the low teens um, Fahrenheit this week. Um, and then maybe even getting a little bit colder than that at night. So I think it'll probably get some use. <laughs> so. I was really happy to have that completed so I can wear it. And then I have been going through, I went through and I organized all of my stash yarn 
and I um, earmarked some of it for projects I wanted to do this year and then some of it I donated to a Girl Scout group who's learning how to knit and crochet and then I had these baskets of like partial projects partially completed projects and I decided you're either gonna frog it or finish it and one of the baskets so I've been calling it operation basket um, one of the baskets was full of hexapuffs for the beekeepers quilt that I'd done years ago and then never picked them back up but I loved them so I didn't want to like rip them out or anything and I have two chairs since it's just Patrick and I our kitchen table is just two seats and they're the table and chairs it's um, from an old ice cream shop so I love that that they have history and we like rescued them but they're really kind of stiff <laughs> and hard so I decided to put the hexapuffs together into um, chair cushions for those um, kitchen chairs and they turned out really well. So here is one of the cushions. Most of the yarn in the cush in um, all in the hexapuffs is koigu. A lot of it's koigu. There are a few other things, but most of it's koigu. And here's the second one. Um, even though this is koigu yarn. I dyed it. I took a class um, at a shop years ago and we did some crock pot dyeing and that was where these little blue and brown and white ones came from. So I just tied them together. So this is the back side so you can see the little ties. And I did, I'm a little bit, um, I don't always like random things. so. They do match a little bit, like if I had duplicates and triplets and stuff, I tried to match them up so they kind of match. And then I did use the same yarn to tie all of them together. So that's the back side, this is the front side. I was really happy with them. And I had enough left over to do a teeny tiny little um, chair pad for my desk chair. So those are all finished up and I was really happy with that project. Um, so those are all, I think that's all of my finished projects. I did have one project in, um, that's already on the needles, um, and I've talked about these before, my IU socks, but the last day, the last afternoon that we had with Riley, I was trying to comfort him, and he was having a lot of trouble breathing, and, um, couldn't really lay his head down very well and get comfortable so one of the things he always liked to do was to for me to sit like with my legs crossed and then he would sit in between and kind of snuggle in so I did that and knit it a little bit because I was trying to calm myself down and calm him down so my last few rows that I knitted with Riley I went in and for each letter in his name, I duplicate stitched over part of that row. So he's in my little IU socks. So he was always such a good dog about me knitting, um, unless he wanted to try and use it for a pillow, but <laughs> he was really good about it. Um, so those are my finished projects, the blocks and the works in progress for this week. The only other thing I wanted to show you guys, um, if you watch A Knitter's Life, Christina Wall's podcast, um, you probably saw that she um, showed some bags and some yarn that she spun for um, gifts. I was so lucky to be the recipient of one of them. So she made me this lovely bag that I thought was just adorable. She used um, felted, a felted sweater, and then did some crochet on the edging, and then did her, what I consider to kind of be Christina's signature, I don't know if she does, but I do, her um, felted like applique. And I just think that's so cute, and I love the little button, it's adorable. And then inside, 
um, were several things. One of them was this skein of hand spun. Um, let's see, she says, one handmade, I can't tell if that's an L-E-F-E -E or L-I-F-E, -E. I think it's L-I-F-E -E fiber. So it's a merino and silk blend. It's about 200 yards and it's just gorgeous. So I've been like looking online at something to make. I haven't completely decided just yet, um, but I've been wearing my hair <laughs> kind of up in this crazy bun thing a lot. So when I put, I can't put on hats without, you know, it being an issue. So I thought about making, um, I found a hat pattern in Ravelry where there's actually a hole there for you to wear your hair up like this. And most of them are lower because if you're doing a ponytail, but it's, I put it kind of up really high. So I think I might make that out of it because I think that would be really cute and show off the yarn really well. So anyway. And then I had almost bought one of these the day before. Um, we, got, we met up to, met up at a coffee shop and it's always so fun to get together and we um, talk everything you can imagine about knitting and crocheting and um, designing and things like that. And at the end we always laugh because it kind of feels like a business meeting for us um, in, in a good way because um, we really enjoy what we do. But it's great to have that other person to kind of like bounce ideas off of and say, have you, you know, noticed this new yarn? Or did you, you know, I got contacted by this person. What do you think about this opportunity? That kind of thing. So it's really fun. Um, but I almost bought this needle keeper called the Magic Wand for myself the day before because as much as I liked making this in the brioche stitch, if you, drop brioche, stitch, brioche stitches off your needle, it is really hard <laughs> to get it corrected. So, and I'm somebody who usually, I always knit with circulars, so I just push my work down and onto the cable and don't even worry about it falling off. And um, with that project, I broke a pair of needles and then things kept sliding around. I, probably was a silk now that I think about that sliding problem. But anyway, so the last week that I, or so that I knitted on that, I used this to keep my needles in check. And I don't have any needles next to me, but you just put them into this rubber end and they just sit inside the tube and kind of dangle there while you have your project stored. So it says, never worry about damaging your circulars again just really love it so that was great too she also made me some cute little stitch markers that are little sweaters and um, I've already put those into a different bag so um, I'll have to show those in the future but it was just so sweet of Christina to take the time to make things I really appreciated it and um, it was just I'm just happy. I told her, I said, when I saw it on her podcast, I thought, oh, I'm going to have to ask her to make me one like that. <laughs> so she, she got it right. It's great. Love it. So I think that's everything. Um, there is one other thing. I forgot to mention the giveaway for March. So I opened up a thread on the Browning Knits Ravelry group called Final Four. And, um, in March around here, there's what's called March Madness, which is the college basketball tourney. And you get, they select so many teams and then it's um, kind of a one and done. If you get beat, you're out of the tourney to then crown a national champion team. And when they get down to the four, the last four, it's called the final four. So because I'm drawing in March for the next giveaway, I thought I would do a final four theme. And the final four questions in the thread to register are where, what is your alma mater? And that can be any level of schooling that you want to do. Um, what were their school colors, their mascot, and what's your favorite memory from that time? So that's been a fun thread to read too. So hop up there and get yourself registered because it's a wonderful giveaway. 
I'm going to have a sock bag from a shop that I'll talk more about in the future podcast and some mini skeins um, of sock yarn because so many people are doing um, scrappy blankets right now that I thought that would be a fun thing to include and some stitch markers. So it will be a great little giveaway to win. So I hope that you hop up there and um, register for the giveaway. If you have any questions about any of the stuff I talked about, please let me know. Um, I will include as much as I can in the show notes on YouTube, and I always post those on Ravelry and um, on my blog as well, which is ginacanaus.blogspot.com. Um, and the Ravelry board is the Brownie Knits Ravelry group. And YouTube, if you're watching this, you've probably already found that, but our Brownie Knits um, channel is Brownie Knits All One Word on YouTube. Um, yeah, so I think that's everything. I really hope that you guys enjoyed the podcast and are all doing really well. So I'll say bye for now. Happy knitting and happy crocheting. Bye-bye.